Hello everyone, it is Chase Chapel, and welcome to week one, module three. We are going to be covering something a little bit different today, and that is organic attraction. So on the last module, module two, you, you saw that we talked about, you know, what are some of the main metrics that we really focus on uh, with paid ads? And with organic attraction, it's, it's, it's more a matter of getting free results, and the only thing you're really exchanging is time. And the main reason we're doing organic attraction is because we want to make sure that we have a proof of concept before we go live with the ads. So some of the things we are going to cover today are proof of concept, establishing a proof of concept, and the organic attraction machine. So what is a proof of concept? A proof of concept lets us know that our offer, our messaging, and our products and services work. So we want to make sure that we have like a proven model basically before we actually start running paid ads. Because if we don't know up front, you know, if, if what we offer actually is something that people want to buy, then we're going to have a lot harder of a time launching paid ads and getting somebody to make that decision. So if, if we end up proving out the concept with organic attraction methods, we're going to be able to identify, you know, what is the best messaging we can start using? You know, we're really able to end up finding out a lot of good things prior to going live with the ads so that way we can really have something set in stone for when we do. Now we must first establish a proof of concept on a smaller scale before going live with paid advertising. We first do this by using organic attraction methods. So establishing a proof of concept, a proven message, a proven offer, and a proven funnel. So what I want you to do is go ahead and open up the worksheet below. So the worksheet should look something like this. It's called the proof of concept worksheet and it's, it's linked below. You can go ahead and open it and you can make a copy and Google Docs. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and start you know, filling this out so that way you can really identify the main points that we're going to start using in order to start generating some clients and getting some people to buy our product or service. So let's go ahead and go through this. What is the product slash service you are selling? I'll go ahead and use you know, an example of mine Let's say that you know we're selling Facebook ads. I would end up writing that down. And why does someone need this product or service? Well, if they're you know they got stuck in their business and they're wanting to scale further, that could be a good reason why they might need this this service. And then, what is the current situation of our target customer? Well, our target customer is business owners and individuals who you know are starting a business or have a business and are you know already profitable or wanting to become profitable and they're really just wanting to scale up and get more results than they are now. And why would their life be better if they used your product slash service? So, you know, their life would probably be better with our service because, you know, if they end up getting a lot more results with their business, they're gonna be able to get the financial freedom in their personal lives and they're gonna be able to help their family more. And what is your potential customer's desired situation? Well, it could be, you know, being able to successfully have a business that, you know, generates a, a consistent amount of income every month, you know, bringing real consistency to the business. That could be their desired situation. It could be that they want to go from a million dollars to $2 million a year, or it could be that they're wanting to go from 10,000 to $100,000 per month. It totally varies per customer, but we really need to identify, you know, what are the desired situations of the potential customers that we want to go after. And the reason we must do this is because we really want to understand, you know, who is it that you know, we're really going to be targeting. And that's really gonna allow us to find out during the organic, you know, using these organic methods. And so you're gonna define your message in a simple sentence or two using the message example. So this is, um, this is actually a template that I use. And, you know, this is something that I test with Facebook Messenger. And I'll send out these messages to qualified individuals that I think, you know, could really use and benefit from our services. And I'll say something along the lines of, Hey, if you are ever needing any help with current situation or need any recommendations, I would be happy to see what I can do. So you would fill in their current situation and that could be like, hey, if you're ever needing any help with scaling your business with Facebook ads or need any recommendations, I'd be happy to see what I can do. So basically this comes off pretty friendly and you know it works extremely well whenever you plug in their current situation because it allows them to identify and say, hey, that is my current situation. And if it is, they're gonna gain interest and if not, they'll go ahead and let you know and they'll say thank you because you said or need any recommendations so that way you come off pretty nice and you're not you know, interrupting somebody uh, you know, just completely. 
The next one is rate your message on a scale of one to 10. So basically you're going to rate it, you know, one being, you know, nobody read it with no response in Facebook Messenger, and 10 being they responded and wanna hear more from you. So we're actually gonna start sending out this message to people on Facebook Messenger, and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about how we're gonna find qualified individuals, but the main thing is you're going to, you know, find people on Facebook, you're gonna friend them, and then once they accept your friend request, you're going to send them a message and start a conversation with them, and you're gonna send the message, and then you're gonna present an offer, and if they end up buying or they're interested and move forward with you in your funnel, that is, you know, a good thing. And we wanna basically find out what is the best message and what is the best offer, so that way we can have something, you know, um, pretty solid for when we roll into paid advertising. The next thing that you'll do is, you'll scroll down to part two. And part two is testing with 50 people. So the reason we test with 50 people is because, you know, with Facebook, you can only really um, send about 50 messages per day and friend about 50 people before um, the Facebook algorithm platform basically, you know, ends up flagging you or ends up marking it as, you know, you're, you're spamming. So just make sure that you stay around the 50 people mark. And that is ideal because you want to get to that point because that's a significant amount for you to be able to really identify if any of this actually works. So you'll start by sending your message to 50 potential customers via Facebook Messenger, and you should make at least 30 offers, and you must get five to 10 people to take your call to action before judging if you have a proof of concept. So what are 30 offers? Well, first, when you send that very first message that I showed you above, you're gonna then jot down notes on what people bring up. What words or phrases do you hear potential customers constantly bring up? What are some common stories do you always hear with potential customers? What did the potential customers who were interested say? What did they? What were they not interested in? You're going to take as many notes as you can, basically being, you know, um, really gaining as many insights on your potential customers as possible. The more information you have on them, the better it is it's going to be for you with paid advertising. Because if you really find out what your audience wants before going into paid advertising, well, your messaging is going to be spot on when you launch those ads. It's going to save you a lot of money and you're really going to identify, you know, what is it that they want? And you're going to be able to address that pretty directly and get people to convert. And I believe we skipped one right here. And so we have define your message, and then we have the next one, which should be define your offer. So if I can zoom in here. So the offer. Um, here's an example. Great. I so after you basically send the very first message and they respond saying they are interested, you're gonna make an offer. You're gonna say, Great, I have a your offer, insert here, that helps target customer to get desired result. Feel free to go through the process and take call to action if you would like. I'd be happy to see if I can help. So basically what this would look like is great. I have, you know, um, in my case it would be, let's say I'm selling Facebook ads, great. I have a Facebook ad service that helps, you know, business owners like yourself who are interested in scaling and getting to that six figure level, which is the desired result. Feel free to go through the process and schedule a call with me, that's gonna be my call to action. I want them to get on a call because then that's where they can end up being sold. I would be happy to sell, I'd be happy to see if I can help you. So that is going to be your offer. You're basically going to present, what is it that you're selling? Who is it that you're helping? Why is it that you're you know, doing this? It's to get them to their desired result. And what is the call to action that you want them to take? Basically, you know, if you have a product that's like, for instance, e-commerce, you necessarily wouldn't be getting on a call with them. That'd be silly because if the product's like $20, there's no sense in doing that. What would make more sense is, you know, you would talk about your offer, you would talk about how that helps them, why your product's unique, and then you would basically, you know, really present to them the landing page. You would just take them directly to the purchase page. And if they make a purchase, then that's your, your call to action. And you know, if you sell sunglasses or something and you have like these super cool branded sunglasses and they, you know, are really exciting and they're basically gonna give these people like superpowers on the beach and you know, everybody's gonna love them for it. I don't know what it is, but you know, if that's their desired situation, then you basically present that to them and if they purchase it, that counts as, you know, one person purchasing and you want really about five to 10 people to take your call to action before you have a proof of concept. So you send out your offer and then you're going to rate your offer. You're gonna see how well it resonated with your potential customers. 
And that's where you really go into part two, which is really taking in as much insights because people are gonna respond to you. They're gonna give you stories. They're gonna give you the same words. There's gonna be a lot of people who use the same phrases. Oh, I don't know, I don't, this doesn't really work for me. Or I've tried this before, or I've hired this person to do this, or I already own that, or I already do that, or I already have this. They're all gonna say something pretty consistent amongst each other. And you're gonna use that info to basically, you know, really identify what way you can position your message and offer moving forward to get people to convert better. And so once you write down and jot all these things down, you're then gonna move over to, you know, part three. And there's also, you know, you wanna ask, you're gonna find out how, did it, how are they coming off? Do they seem excited about what you offer? Are they saddened about their situation? Or do they feel helpless or are they super motivated? You know, you're really gonna be able to tell because they're gonna use some keywords that are gonna help you identify, you know, what is it that get these people going? And then you're gonna write down what doesn't resonate and what did resonate with your potential customer. And then you're going to move to part three, iterate your message and offer based on the insights and notes you gathered from the first 50 people you spoke with over Messenger. So what that means is you're just gonna tweak it a little bit. You know, Maybe you're gonna change a few words. You're gonna start using the words that um, your potential customers are using. You're going to address the stories up front before they're actually saying it now because you're starting to speak their language. You're going to iterate your message and offer to speak more like how they speak. You know, really getting in their mind and understanding who they are because you've already spoken with 50 people. Now the next 50 people, they're going to resonate a lot better because you're going to know exactly how to address a lot of these, you know, um, objections and a lot of things that they say and you're going to be able to, you know, beforehand already have it laid out. And so then once you do that and you test with another 50 people, you're then going to rate your message and you're going to rate your offer on a scale of one to 10. And if it improved, that's good. And once you get five to 10 people to take your call to action, you can then judge if you have a proof of concept. And if that is the case, feel free to roll into paid advertising. So let's go ahead and move back. So we, we talked about establishing a proof of concept. It's really you know, identifying a proven message that resonates with people on Facebook Messenger and really having a proven offer that can get people to either you know, get on a call with you or get people to go to your landing page and you capture their email or get people to make a purchase. As long as you're basically moving people forward in the process and you're getting them you know, further than, along than they already were and you're building up interest and you're getting people to make purchases, that really shows that you do have a proof of concept. But until then, you just need to keep testing your message, keep sending out messages, keep adding people, and really working on improving your message and offer because that's really going to help you moving into paid advertising. And without a proven funnel, you, you really can't, your, your Facebook ads can only do so much if your funnel's not working. And really what the proof of concept helps with is whenever you're sending people to your landing pages and you're sending people to your purchase pages, you're gonna find out you know, um, areas of improvements and that's really going to help. So let's talk about the organic attraction machine. Basically the daily items that we can do to increase the amount of data you get on your pixel, the amount of people who visit your website, the amount of insights you can gather, and really identify what works and what doesn't work in advance. And I really also recommend running organic attraction machine alongside the proven system with the paid advertising. And you'll see what this looks like. Um, what we do is we first start by joining qualified Facebook groups and what that basically means is, you know, whichever niche or, you know, wherever, whatever you're in, if you have um, an agency and, you know, you're really looking for people that are business owners, you can basically go join groups like that have software. So like a lot of business owners might be in ClickFunnels because you know, all of them are there. And then you could also, if maybe your target audiences are coaches who sell online courses, you could join, you know, the a Kajabi group, which is basically an online platform. And all of these softwares have public Facebook groups for support people. And, you know, if you join these groups and you get in there, you're going to see that your target audience is mo more than likely going to be in there. All of those people are right there waiting for you. And you can actually join the group and be put where everybody is that you want as a customer. If you are selling, you know, if, if, you're, in, if you're in real estate, you can join real estate groups, people buy, sell homes, you can join. There's so many things, there's so many groups. Basically, 
you know, whichever niche or whichever business model that you have, just look for groups that are similar. And then also look for softwares that those business owners use or things that those business owners like to do. You know, where do they like to hang out? And just search a group and once you find it, you're gonna join that qualified Facebook group. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to create one value post in the group daily. And essentially what that means is you're gonna create one post that gives a lot of value to the group. So if you're in real estate, you could give a bunch of uh, tips on real estate. If you know you have a moving company and somebody's moving, you could give a lot of insights on you know best practices for moving because people join these groups looking for answers. And a lot of times the answers aren't always there. And if you're the one providing the great insights, people are going to remember you for that and they're going to reach out to you. I can't explain how much indirect impact this actually gives you initially because when you post a value post, not only are you gonna get you know, qualified individuals wanting to be your friend on Facebook. You're also going to get people who are direct messaging you saying that they want to learn more or they're interested in hearing more or they need your help, which is perfect because if you're, you know, selling a product or service that can help them, you know, they're already coming to you. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to increase your reach. More people are going to be commenting and so much is going to happen. That's really going to allow you to start moving these people forward into your funnel. And once you create one value post, you're then going to start conversations in the comment sections daily. So ideally a value post needs to get a lot of engagement. Ideally you want, you know, over 50 likes, you want at least 10 plus comments, and you're going to start engaging conversations, basically building authority, you know, engaging with people, showing that you're authentic and you're not just there to, you know, direct people instantly into a sale. And as you're speaking with these people and you're identifying problems, you're then going to start helping them by moving them into Facebook Messenger. You're going to send them a message and you're going to direct them into your funnel on how you can help them. And this is basically moving them forward in your process. And this is where really where you can start using your messaging that we just recently talked about and in initiating your offer. And this is going to allow you to get insights on your on your actual website, your pixel, you're going to be able to retarget these people. And it's really going to start building awareness around everything that you do. And the next thing is, as soon as you join these groups and you create a value post and you're starting conversations now, you're then going to look for 50 qualified friends from that group daily. So you're going to go through the group. You're going to find an individual that looks like they could be a potential customer. If your audience is, you know, business owners or you only work with a specific, um, you know, type of person who is an athlete or whatever the case is, you know, you can actually very well tell a lot of times people will put in their Facebook profile what they do, who they help, and you can pretty much qualify them um, very quickly and you'll just add them. And as soon as they accept your friend request, you're then going to send them a message. And that's where you're going to be adding the 50 qualified friends and you're going to be sending out your message to the 50 qualified friends and you're going to be directing them with your potential offer by sending them into your funnel, whether that's getting on a call, whether that's getting them to go to the landing page and you capture their email or whether that's them purchasing. You're always going to be moving people forward in the process while you're helping them. And then you're going to post on your personal profile daily. So. Um, a lot of you might have family on your Facebook. Um, a lot of you might not be open to sharing stuff on your Facebook, but you know, there, that's really something that you're going to have to get over because, you know, it, a lot of times in business, if you're wanting to generate a lot of awareness and you're wanting to get a lot of people engaged, you're going to have to do a mixture of both. You're going to have to make sure that you're really, you know, promoting business and, you know, really looking to help people because over time that's really going to build up and get you a lot of customers through organic alone. And that's going to help fuel your paid advertising as well. And so you're going to add anyone as a friend who likes or leaves a positive comment on your post daily. And the reason we're doing this is because they're showing that they're engaged with your value post. They're showing that they, you know, enjoyed your content. And if they leave a positive comment, like they really liked what you said, or they really found value and they want to learn more, that's really where you're going to start messaging them and adding them as a friend. And then you're going to be moving these people into your email list daily. If you don't already have their email, you're going to be sending them to, you know, your landing page where you can capture their email, whether that's you, you know, you're giving out something for free or whatever the case is, you want to start capturing data because you want to move these people onto your list. And then you're going to be sending these people one value email weekly on your list, directing potential customers back into your funnel. So basically anybody who didn't purchase from um, your actual, you know, from Messenger and going to your website and they didn't make the purchase, well, since they're on your email list, you can now start following up with them, getting them back into the process, moving them forward. And you're gonna ask for the sale and direct potential customers to the purchase. So let's look at how this works from a high level now. 
we covered joining qualified Facebook groups. And when you join qualified Facebook groups, you're then going to create one valuable post, not spamming, no links. You're just going to create a value post, creating a lot of value and engagement, improving the group. So that way that, you know, you don't get kicked out, giving a lot of value. So a lot of people find, you know, what you're doing is authentic. You're then going to start conversations in those comment sections daily, directing potential customers to your funnel by helping them. If you have a solution, you know, don't always ex answer their question exactly. Just give them enough info that really helps them believe that you know what you're talking about, and then you can direct them to your funnel. You're then going to be adding 50 qualified friends from the group daily, and you're then going to be messaging those 50 qualified friends daily. And if they respond showing interest in your initial message, you're then going to direct them into your funnel using your offer. And then you're going to also be posting on your personal profile daily. So at this point, now people are seeing you in the group. They're now friends with you. And now they're even seeing your personal profiles post. You've probably even spoken with them. You've probably also started a conversation with them in a comment section. They see that you're also in the same group as them and they're liking your content, they're commenting on your stuff. This is really where they, you know, the full omnipresence of you being around is really starting to take over in their head. They're starting to realize you're everywhere. They're starting to realize you're an authority. You're, you're really, you know, in all these different places and you're not just, you know, a one-time show up. You're, you're here to stay and, you know, all of your content is being shown on their feeds. They see you everywhere. And that's really going to allow you to, you know, help get these people into your funnel because you know they see you everywhere and they're going to start trusting you. And now these people are going to be on your email list daily and you're going to be sending them one value email. So now even off of the social media platform, you're showing up in the inbox, giving them value and you're going to be, you know, linking back to your actual funnel. So that way you can capture these people. And then you're going to ask for the sell. And basically we're going to use the organic attraction machine to get five to 10 customers. And once that is the case, you have a proof of concept and, you know, um, I definitely 100% give you the green light for running paid ads. And, you know, I honestly recommend that you keep doing this alongside of paid advertising because, you know, it really helps whenever you have organic traffic coming to your site, as well as, you know, people purchasing from organic, because that really means that your, your pixel that's attached to your website is really going to be able to gain more data. It's going to get more analytics. It's going to be able to optimize your ads more, and you're just going to have a lot more data to work with, which is a lot better than having no data at all. So here's what we covered today. We covered why having a proof of concept is important. We also covered why establishing a proof of concept is necessary. And then we also covered the organic attraction machine on how we can, you know, ensure we prove out the concept and then also ways that we can use organic attraction on a regular basis, daily, providing value to people, building authority, gaining trust, and really building up our data so that way we can really hit the ground running with paid advertising. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one.